Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to cardiology lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I have been a cardiologist at the Texas Medical Center for more than 30 years. Today we are going to learn something about uh, cardiac myocyte function. So let us begin. If we were to take a small piece of the myocardium and, and look at it grossly, we will see it has the inner lining which is uh, called the endothelium which is lined by the endothelial cells and the outer lining and the outer lining namely the pericardium where we have the visceral pericardium which is uh, sort of uh, plastered to the myocardium then we have a, a tiny space and beyond that we have the parietal pericardium. The myocardium consists of approximately one centimeter thick muscle tissue, especially representing the left ventricle. The myocardial cells are called the myocytes, as you can see here. They are branching cells, so they are interconnected with each other, and each myocyte has a nucleus. There is an interstitial tissue, which we'll talk about, that binds all these cells together. One of the differences between the myocardial cells or the myocytes compared to the skeletal muscle cells is that the entire myocardial system works as one single unit when it is activated by an electrical impulse coming from the sinus node or the AV node. If we were to look at the microscopic picture of uh, the myocardium, we will see these branching cells which connect with each other. There is the nucleus and between these branching cells we have these discs that sort of connect the adjacent cells and these are called the intercalated discs. The reason why these myocardial cells are arranged this way is to facilitate the transmission of the electrical impulse which generates the action potential which activates the entire ventricle instantaneously. And here is a better representation of these branches from the myocytes connecting each other and here are the intercalated discs that connect the cells in the adjacent uh, region. If we were to look inside one of these myocytes, they are sort of rounded cylindrical structures, the outer layer of which is the sarcolemma that forms the membrane and inside that we have numerous longitudinal muscle fibers known as the myofibrils. We will get more into the details of the myofibrils and inside the myocyte we also have the mitochondria and along with the mitochondria we have the interstitial network that uh, acts as uh, a glue to bring all these myofibrils together and also provide the channel of networks uh, for providing electrolytes and propagation of the electrical impulses. One of the characteristics of uh, a myocyte is the alternating dark and light bands. These alternating dark and light bands are related to the structures within these myofibrils known as the actin which is a lighter band and in the middle we have the myosin which accounts for the darkness in the myocytes. If we look further into the structure of the myocyte, we can get a clue as to uh, how, how this myocyte is uh, organized. Here we have these branching arms of the myocyte connecting the adjacent cells. Within the myocyte, we have this uh, very rich network of uh, sarcoplasmic reticulum or SR as it is abbreviated and it acts like uh, a plumbing system within the myocyte that helps to provide electrolytes, especially calcium, to propagate the electrical impulse and bring about myocardial contraction or action potential and also provide nutrients uh, to these myofibrils. Here we can see the alternating light 
and dark bands. The dark bands, of course, represent the myosin and the lighter bands represent the actin. It is the actin and myosin complex that creates the shortening of the muscle fibers during an action potential which causes the ventricle to contract as a single unit. When we look at one unit of light and dark bands, this is how it looks. We have the thin filament which is known as the actin. Then we have the thick filament which is known as the myosin. Let us look at a little deeper into this actin and myosin complex and how it helps to shrink the myocardial cells individually which collectively leads to contraction of the entire atrium or the ventricle. Here is an expanded version of uh, lighter and darker bands. Each unit is separated by a Z disc and in the middle we have the M line. In the center we have the myosin thick filaments which have little tentacles which we will talk about in a minute which slides these actin filaments to reduce the length between the Z discs thus producing contraction of individual muscle contractile elements which leads to the overall contraction of the ventricle and when the ventricle is relaxed these uh, actin filaments are released so they move away from the main myosin filaments and when the ventricle is contracting the actin filaments are drawn together thus reducing the distance between the Z discs which leads to shrinking of the myocardial cells thus leading to contraction of the right or the left ventricular cavity. Let us look a little deeper into these uh, thin and thick filaments and here we have the myosin which has this uh, myofibril filaments along with this, uh, these tentacles I was talking about which have the myosin light chain and myosin heavy chains. These little goblets attach to the thin filament and talking about the thin filaments, let us look at what makes up the thin filament. The thin filament has uh, troponin T bands, it is a helical structure with the two helicals wrapped around each other. Then we have the troponin T along with the troponin I which are on the surface of this uh, light, uh, these goblets attach to the tropo, troponin tropomyosin and then drags these uh, thin filaments towards the center thus reducing the distance between the Z disc points. When it is relaxed these thin filaments are moved away from the center of the actin myosin complex and when it is contracting it is moving this closer to the M point which is the midline point thus reducing the, the distance between the D disc. We talked about troponin T and troponin I. Now you know why we get elevation of uh, troponin levels in patients with uh, n STEMI or STEMI because there is damage to the myocyte which leaks this troponin I and troponin T which is measured in the serum to establish the diagnosis of n STEMI or STEMI. All right, let us look a little deeper here. These myocytes also have what are called the calcium channels which are connected to the sarcoplasmic reticulum which I showed you earlier and it is through the sarcoplasmic reticulum and through the T tibules where the calcium enters the myocytes which begins the activation of the myocardium first through the electrical activation followed by a mechanical activation which leads to shortening of the actin myosin complex. In addition to that there are also beta adrenergic receptors which are also located on the myocytes which activates uh, or inhibits the myocardial contractility and we will touch upon that in a few minutes. Here we can get a 
little deeper understanding of uh, how the troponin C and troponin I bring about the attachment of these uh, myosin goblets to the actin filament uh, troponin C and troponin I molecules. When calcium enters from the tubular, when calcium enters inside the cell and it activates this sarcoplasmic reticulum, there is more calcium release. This calcium activates the troponin C. The troponin C binds the calcium released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, thus making the troponin C active, which binds to the myosin goblets so that the myosin goblets can move the actin filaments back and forth. Whereas troponin I inhibits actin myosin binding until calcium binds to troponin C. So during relaxation, the troponin I inhibits the binding of calcium to the troponin C, thus disconnecting the connection between the myosin and actin leading to the movement of the actin filaments back to their original position. Okay, let us put all this information together at the molecular level or electrolyte level and see how each myocyte functions like an independent unit, but at the same time all the cells work unanimously at the single transmission of an electrical impulse. Under resting membrane potential which is minus 80 to 100 millivolts, the calcium is in the T tubules outside the myocytes. When a small amount of calcium enters, it activates the sarcoplasmic release of more calcium which leads to sodium potassium pump resulting in action potential which causes a sudden increase in voltage inside the myocyte producing phase 0. Then we have phase 1 which is brought on by the potassium. Then we have phase 2 which is the plateau phase which is maintained again by the calcium inside the myocyte. Then we have the phase 3 which is repolarization which is predominantly brought on by movement of potassium. As you can see outside the cell we have a positively charged whereas inside the myocyte it is minus 80 to 100 millivolts. When an electrical impulse comes the calcium moves inside and similarly the sodium moves inside the cell thus causing this phase 0 of the action potential and during relaxation there is movement of sodium and potassium leading to re-establishment of the resting membrane potential. So the sarcoplasmic reticulum plays an important role in the action potential and eventual contraction of the myocyte and eventually myocyte leading to ventricular contraction. Now let's look at and see what happens in patients with heart failure and why do their my myocytes do not contract as well as they should. There are regulatory proteins called calblastin 2 which inhibits rhinodyne receptor 2 and thus inhibiting the calcium release from sarcoplasmic reticulum. Whereas in patients with heart failure where there is excess epinephrine and catecholamines, they lead to excess phosphorylation of protein kinase. That leads to depletion of the sarcoplasmic calcium levels. When there is reduced sarcoplasmic calcium levels, if you go back to the previous slide, when there is reduction in the sarcoplasmic calcium levels, less calcium is released into the myocyte which leads to impaired myocardial cell function leading to heart failure. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a, a, brief, this is a brief overview of anatomy and physiology of uh, cardiac myocyte function. I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I hope uh, this has been useful to you. 
and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you next time. Thank you so much for your time.